Hello, today I'm working on an HP Pavilion. This is a 15-AK085NA. This computer has a bad keyboard, and unfortunately, the keyboard is integrated into the top case, or welded onto the top case with little plastic rivets. So I've got a new replacement keyboard, which has black keys instead of the white keys. I did talk about that with the customer, and she's perfectly happy. I'm uh, just making sure the keyboard looks the same, and it does. It's the right, it's got all the right special keys, the right curvature, it's the right keyboard. So, for this repair, we'll have to remove the top case, flip it over, and basically unweld this keyboard, grinding off the, the little plastic rivets. So, that's what we'll do. Just going to check under these two covers. I believe there are probably screws in there. Yep. I seem to remember that happening last time. Okay, I've removed all of the screws, so now I just need to pry this up. There's a pre existing scratch there and there. I don't feel any cracks though, that's good. This is very tight. There we go. Um, the CD tray is under there, so the plastic is very thin. I'm going to be very gentle here, trying to get these clips to release. Might put some prying force from here. There we go. And then just use this to release the clips. Got these two sides done and released. That whole side just went. Looks like we have. Oh, I see. No, the computer. The computer is mounted to the top case. So, what I'm doing here is basically just removing the bottom case, which means that in order to change the keyboard, I'm going to have to take the motherboard out and basically just gut the whole computer. That's okay. I might just double check to make sure. See if I can release this here. Uh, I think it already is released actually. Maybe not here, but here this is moving quite freely. Not here though. So there's still clips holding on over here. There we go. Brilliant. No broken plastic. Ugh. Okay. I did an SSD upgrade in this computer and I disconnected the keyboard because the keyboard that's in there has a stuck key so you couldn't use the computer even with an external keyboard while that was connected. So that's why that's disconnected. Now I basically need to strip this. I need to take the I.O. board off, possibly the speakers, um, but certainly the motherboard and the SSD. So I think I'll just start there. This should lift up. Uh, it lifts up from the front. These are stuck in there. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's the motherboard. So the Wi Fi adapter might as well come out. Now I've got. Looks like a speaker wire and maybe the webcam connector. I don't know. So with the speaker wire, the red is closest to me, closest to the back hinge. Very tight connections. I don't think these have ever been disconnected before. That's very tight. 
Okay. So that's free. Uh, the heat sink and fan, I'm not sure whether they come out as one assembly or not. It looks like not. I'll take this fan screw out though first. And there's another one there. They're the same length. Okay. So again, the red is closest to me on this plug. There's the cooling fan out. Looks like the speakers do need to come out because they're laying on top of the keyboard tray. I don't think they're screwed in though. Uh, okay, I'll take out this daughter board or I.O. board. Um, let's see, two screws. Both the same length, the same length as the fan. So there's another little board there. Oh, this is getting kind of messy here. I don't see any other screws, but it feels quite firmly mounted on here still. I'll disconnect this ribbon cable. Oh, it was just stuck on there. Just very tight. It's never been removed before. Now the power jack. Uh, yeah, I think the the whole top case is going to have to come off. The hinges need to come off to release the power jack and actually the metal plate that the keyboard is underneath is under the power jack, kind of under the hinges. <laughs> oh, I didn't really realize this was going to re require taking the whole laptop apart. Literally taking every component out. But here we are. It's fine. So this is the DC input. Okay. That's loose. I think I can take the motherboard out now. I see motherboard screws here, here, and here. They are the same as all the other screws. I think that's that's everything. Um, oh, the mouse or the touchpad. Okay. So there's the motherboard, the CPU, and cooler. Just gonna lay that in the bottom case. So this metal plate is held down by the hinges. So I am going to need to remove, basically disconnect the hinges and take the top off the bottom. So there are some wires going through the hinge. There's this antenna wire and I presume the webcam go through on this side. And then the video cable goes through on this side. It's in a little wire loom here that's quite tight. I can't quite get the, uh... there we go. I didn't want to just yank the wire through there, so I used something to pry the, the jaws of that open a little bit. Now this speaker, there's a little piece of tape holding that speaker wire. Oh no, it's just caught under the tape for that plastic sheeting. This power jack is in a wire loom next to the speaker. And then stuck into the speaker there. So this speaker comes out. So there's both the speakers. Every time I see a job like this and I think, oh no, this is too complicated. I remember doing this on a MacBook Pro and this is pretty straightforward compared to that. So it's okay. Now there's only one, no, two screws on this hinge left in there. This one looks like maybe only one. And that is the same short, whatever that is, the same screw as all the rest of them. And when I say that, I mean there are two different screws there. Along the back edge of the bottom case, there's a long screw. But then every other screw in here, well, there is a long screw. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There were eight long screws along the back edge. Every other screw is this short black one. So by comparison, all right. 
I'm going to grab this hinge in a place where there's nothing else where I can get to it and open it. So there's the power jack clear. There's a little daughter board here for the power button. I'm going to take that out so I don't damage it. And then I'll open this hinge. Now, how can I get a grip on that? All right. Well, now the top case palm rest should be completely separate from the display assembly. So there's the keyboard top plate and there's the display assembly. <sighs> this is not my favorite job to do one of these keyboards. Now this is stuck on the keyboard. Okay. I'm just going to show this under the microscope. So there are these little plastic rivets. I call them rivets. I, I don't know what they're called. But they're annoying because I have to cut each and every one of them off. Now I could use a Dremel tool for this, but I found that that's quite messy. They go flying everywhere. I might have to though. Ugh. Let me back up a little bit. So we've got some grounding strap here I'm going to just, just take off. So that grounds the metal of this plate to the, I guess, to the plastic of the palm rest. So this plate we have to keep. We're going to reuse it. It's part of the laptop. Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably sharp enough. I'm going to just try see how easily this comes off. Pretty easily. I mean, I can see that I'm under it. The key is movement. Not to just press hard, but to move it because then I'm kind of sawing through it. I'm not putting too much force on the on the tool so that I risk it shooting out and cutting my hand. So this is gonna take forever.
Is that all of them? Yep. Okay. Now, I still have to get... There are probably still some rivets that are just holding the keyboard in. Yes, there are. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to get those with this tool, or I'll just hack this keyboard apart. Which wouldn't be the end of the world, but... Let's see. What's holding it in here? So there's a grounding strap here. And then we've got some more plastic rivets. Yeah. I'm going to fire up the Dremel tool. This is just... Uh, it's too delicate here on this keyboard now. And I'm going to use a little burr, the grinding cutter. Like that. I guess you could call it a drill, I don't know. Okay, what's holding this in? Looks like there's one there. don't want to come off cleanly. Try not to break on the other side, you know, there's the plastic that goes between the keys and in some of those locations there will be these posts coming through and I just need to make sure that I don't break anything. You know, the last thing I want to do is break that plastic. I'm just kind of being as gentle as I can. While also being kind of assertive enough to to figure out where it's actually sticking. ripped one of the keys off the keyboard. It's a good thing that keyboard's no good. It's coming. It's almost there. All right. So the end key came off. Is that just going to pop straight back on? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Nice. All right, so there weren't a lot of studs holding this in, but um, I might clean up my work area here. And none of this broke, which was my top priority. strap out from under there. <sighs> Alright, 
that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to put on an old, I'm going to put an old tip on my soldering iron, turn the temperature way down, and use the soldering iron to melt some of these plastic. I have to make sure that I don't melt any of them that have to go through this. I wonder if I get this tight enough. Is that just, that's all of them. Okay, I'll do that. I'll put the plate on and I'll just start melting this over. And actually I could use hot glue here. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use hot glue. So I'll just take the soldering iron tip and get some hot glue on it. And melt it to the plastic. Like that. I mean, it feels kind of silly, but I think it's gonna work. I think it's working fine. Oh, you didn't see any of that. Here, let's do it in here. So I'll just get some hot glue on the soldering iron. Not too much. So I'm just trying to do this wherever I scraped a rivet, wherever I scraped a little plastic head off. I just want to try to get some hot glue and also to touch the plastic to basically get it all hot enough that it's making good contact. I'm also very much trying to not drip hot glue into the back of the keyboard. Maybe I should put something down for safety. I might go around the perimeter. This doesn't feel quite great. But Clean that up. Here, especially. Let me just. Uh, I'm gonna take a break. I need a paper towel. Okay. So the trick, I think, is to put some glue on and then hold it while the glue cools. Yeah, that seems to work well. And then I just need to make sure I don't touch this ribbon cable with the soldering iron. Or that would be lights out.
All right. I feel like that's pretty much done. Whoah. Oh, I just need to clean up some of this, uh, some of the little stragglers of glue that kind of... Oh, there's not too many of them, actually. It's not bad at all. Okay. Let's hope that this works. check. It was something like this, but, oh yeah, those holes go right through. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, that just fell into place just where it should be. All right. Zoom us back out a little. Alright, so that goes in there. Nice little wire loom they've got for this. Something like that. We had speakers in here. Uh, <laughs> where do they go? Like that. Oh, that snaps in place, doesn't it? Uh, everything's so tightly controlled. That wire was in speaker loom. Yep. So why isn't that setting? Oh yeah, it is okay. Wow, that's nice. This little daughter board needs to go in there. I think that was underneath. Okay, get this wire back out. Maybe I'll just pop that whole thing out of there first. Where was that? So that was here. It should snap in place. Maybe it won't actually snap it. It's so tight, I don't want to break this board just to snap it in place there. It fits in place like that. Just do the little acrobatics. Put the screw in. Okay. Now I can put the DC jack in again. I'm not sure, but I think it goes something like that down there. And I think I can put the hinges back down. That looks good. Uh, yeah, it was one screw there. And there were two screws on this side. Pad. So we've got this webcam wire and the Wi Fi antenna. It's a mic, that's what it is. It's not the webcam, it's the microphone. 3D mic. Why does it have to be a 3D mic? I think it's really just a stereo mic. Okay. So the DC jack, kind of hard to manipulate when it's in this loom. So now this comes up and through this little wire loom. It has to attach onto the uh, motherboard here. It's a little bit tight. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now there's a I.O. board here. I think that can go in next. Why not? So 
and that snaps in place like that. I should probably put some screws in the motherboard and this board. All right, let's do that. So the motherboard had three screws, if I remember correctly, and I might not. So I'll connect up the touchpad, the new keyboard. I need to put in the cooling fan. What's the matter here? Okay. What does this say now? One, two. So I guess I connect this to one. Oh yeah, it's labeled one. Okay. Hard drive, or SSD in this case. Let me tuck this in first. Okay. Um, okay. Screw in this daughter board. And make sure the power switch cable is straight. It's a little bit crooked by design. I don't know. And let's see if we have power. So I'll plug in the power jack. Power jack lights up and the laptop comes on. Keyboard works. I'm gonna shut down. So I'll just slide this over the wires in the back here. So there's one little bit at the back. Doesn't quite want to snap in place. There we go. Now I'll put the screws in. Here. And then this covers it. And the screw goes through here. I'll have to go drive back in. Now I can just put in all the remaining screws. Put my little covers back on. Just gonna test all the ports. So I'll make sure that the Ethernet jack is working. Yep. Make sure the webcam works. And I'm going to test the keyboard. The quick brown box jumped over the lazy dog. Works great. Feels good. I'm thrilled. This, this worked really well. It was a bit labor intensive, but um, I would say it was definitely worth it. I mean, the alternative was to try to find a top case with keyboard. And my experience has been getting used top cases with keyboards is hit or miss. Uh, I've got two that had liquid damage in them that was concealed. So 
at least this way we know that we've got a brand new keyboard and it works perfectly so I'm happy and hopefully the customer will be too so that's it thanks for watching